the Night Runners, or at least the legend of the Night Runners. In this video, we'll be exploring a little bit more about this legendary faction. There will be spoilers in this video, so you have been warned. Let's dive in. So throughout the game, we hear about this organization or faction called the Night Runners. We find out early that people refer to them in a past tense, and some citizens of Villador flat out deny that they even existed. But it's not until much later in the game that we find out their origins and what exactly happened to them. So their name, Night Runners, suggests exactly that. This group would brave the dangers of the night and help people who were in trouble. This involved clearing out dark zones, areas which were infested with infected, and people needed to get out. The Night Runners would swoop in and rescue them. This also included fighting bandits who were preying on innocents. So let's take a look at their origins. The Night Runners were started up by a man named Frank Maui. Frank himself was a former Special Forces Commando. Frank was married before the fall, but at some point, his wife lost her life. Despite the loss of his wife, Frank still had a strong desire within him to rebuild civilization and help others. Essentially, Frank just wanted the city to become a safe place for everyone. At some point, Frank decided it was time to get more hands-on with helping people in the city, so he started to recruit people to help him. He assembled a pretty decent team, and they became known as the Night Runners. He'd recruited locals such as former soldier Hakon, Killian, and Ravik. Frank's journals mention Dave and Edgar too. There are likely a few more, but we don't really learn their names. But due to the demanding nature of what the Night Runners did, they ended up relying heavily upon a drug known as inhibitors. If you see my video on the story behind Dr. Vincent Waltz, you'll know that inhibitors are a mix of antizin, the drug which suppresses the virus from dying light one, and a THV derivative. You'll also know that they are very dangerous. As you can see in the game, Aiden starts to suffer serious side effects after around 10 doses. Inhibitors kill 95% of people who take them, and that's why Night Runners, although effective at what they do, were quite low in number. Frank's journal gives us a good picture of what happened, and how they ended up in the central loop. Take a listen to the first one. Ever since you left, my life's been dedicated to the Night Runners. People been talking shit about us since the army booted us out, ignoring all the good we've done. They say we're junkies because of the inhibitors. <laughs> they just don't get it. Anyhow, I grabbed Killian and Hakon, and I said, let's build a home where everybody, and I mean everybody, can gather and feel safe. Remember, my old man was an architect. I picked up a few tricks here and there. And so, a bit of fucking around, and wham, we had a canteen. So, it seems that the Night Runners were forced out of Old Villador by the army, who saw them as junkies due to their use of inhibitors. Given that his father was an architect, Frank had a fairly decent idea of how to design and build, so he built the Fisheye Canteen as a place where people could feel safe. Essentially, these people put their lives on the line at a time of day in which the city is the infected's domain. To combat this, the Night Runners would set up temporary safe zones in abandoned buses and on top of buildings and covered these zones in UV light to ward off infected. In the game, we find tapes left behind at these various Night Runner safe spots. These tapes were left by a young Night Runner named Anton Novak. Anton Novak's tapes give us a great idea of what the process is when becoming a Night Runner. I'll now play these tapes back to back so you can hear them. My name is Anton Novak, and I'll be a fucking legend! Uh, sorry. Uh, I couldn't help myself. I'm recording this for you, Pops. You wanna hear a secret? And when you do, I bet you'll be ashamed of yourself. All my life, you told me I wouldn't amount to anything. But then I became a PK. What did you do? Called me a traitor. And Dad's playing that the PK don't give a shit about us. The people of the bazaar. Thanks for the vote of confidence, Pops. There ain't no one I don't give a rat's ass about, Pops. I'll show you what I'm made of. Today, some guy I didn't recognize approached me. Said if I was looking to be a hero, I was looking in the wrong place. And that I have potential. I never heard that from you. Set to meet him on the roof of the old textile factory at midnight. And here I am. Like an idiot. What am I doing here? Yeah, maybe I wanted to show you. I, I, I wanted you to see. Oh shit. What the? Dude jumping between buildings like a fucking panther. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I can't let him find me. Come on out, kid. I know you're here. I'm Killian. Hey, Pop. 
out. I just got back from training with Killian. Says my body's gotta be strong enough for the first shot. I don't know what the fuck that's all about, but Killian's a great guy. Kind of a taskmaster, though. Been keeping me at arm's length. I don't think he entirely trusts me because I was a PK. All I know about them is... They are night runners. <laughs> yeah, them. The ones people are talking about, Pops. They help people. They fight bandits, clear areas of virals. Now they really believe this world can be restored. And I'll be one of them. You'll see. Hey, Pops. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, I don't feel too good. <sighs> Got that first shot today. Whew. Found out they had their eye on me for a while. Stole my PK medical files. Found out my blood type. And Killian recruited me. This shot contains some crap they call inhibitors. A blend of antizin and a THV derivative. They say it kills 95% of people who take it. That's why only a handful become night runners. The chosen ones. The survivors, they mean. And that means me now. Killian says I have one of the strongest metabolisms he's ever seen. Soon, I'll be... like him. Jumping around buildings like a fucking grasshopper. <sighs> I can imagine you shaking your head at all this. Especially getting shot up. You gotta look past that. We have a chance to make a difference. To be the light in the darkness. That's what Killian says. In a couple of days, we're heading into a dark zone. I'm not afraid. Not a bit. I'm looking forward to all of it, Pops. Just wanted to tell you that... Oh, whatever, I, I have to go. I feel amazing! I can run faster, jump higher. I feel as strong as an ox. No, a fucking volatile. Killian says I handled the first dose really well. Now I gotta undergo a hundred days of training. He introduced me to the others. I met Frank, our leader, and... Ah, I fucking talk too much. Killian officially became my training mentor. You'll hear about me soon, Pops. I'm gonna be a fucking legend! Hey, Pops. Today I was pulling civilians out of that dark zone I told you about. With Killian. It was my first dark zone ever. It wasn't that bad. Except for just this one thing. We saved a mother and her children who got trapped in there, and... I have no idea what got into me. But I wanted to go deeper. I wanted to keep going. Find one more family. One more child. Make sure no one was left behind. I had to make sure. Killian tried to tell me we'd cleared the dark zone. For some reason, I didn't believe him. We argued. In the middle of it all, a fucking viral jumped on my back. I, I thought I was... I'm alive only because of Killian. I wish I could talk to you about this. Who does Frank think he is? One minute he talked about my potential, the next he accuses me of reckless behavior. Says that I put others in danger. Back at the dark zone after we pulled that mother and her kids out. Fuck. We pulled it off, didn't we? <laughs> What's so reckless about success? He spewed some line at me about how he's worried my metabolism isn't handling the shots as well as he thought it would. Can you believe this crap, Pops? <sighs> my test results were always perfect. If you ask me, it says more about him than about me. He just can't bear someone standing up to him, especially not a young kid. Oh, and check this out. I was put on notice. He'd be watching me, he said. Fuck him. I'll give him something to watch. Hey, Pops. I'm just coming. I'm about to join the others. Frank gathered everyone. We're supposed to take the station and commandeer its broadcast capabilities. What fucking floor are they on? Actually, I won't lie to you. They told me not to come. To take a rest, whatever that means. But I couldn't just sit around doing nothing. Where the fuck are they? Ah! Didn't turn off the recorder. Pops. They almost got me. But, but they can't break down this door. I'll go up to the roof. I'll make sure we can broadcast to the city. I'll wait here for these fucking monsters to go away and then I'll, I'll slip out. I can't tell how long I've been trapped in here. I think they're gone. But I'll wait a bit longer, just in case. Remember when I was five, Pops? Me 
and you took me to the lookout tower. When we got to the top, I was so proud that I made it. I was so exhausted I could hardly breathe. I thought you'd be proud of me. But all you said was that I sounded like some asthmatic old lady. I'm scared, Pops. Frank was right. I, sh I shouldn't have come here. But I wanted to show you that I wasn't the weakling you always told me I was. Okay. The volatile's gotta be gone by now. Yeah. The coast is clear. So it seems that the recruitment process for finding Nightrunners was a very specific one. As you heard in the tapes, young Anton was a peacekeeper, much to the annoyance of his father, who was a resident of the bazaar, who, you'll remember, hated the peacekeepers. At some point, Frank and Killian got a hold of Anton's medical details. It seems that Anton was cherry-picked due to one particular trait, his blood type. Now this is significant because the night runners, in order to be able to run faster and jump higher, had to rely on inhibitors. Anton describes a tough regime of 100 days of training after surviving the inhibitors. It's not long after this, Frank, the leader of the Night Runners, decides that they need to step up their plan to ensure the safety of people in the city. And this leads us to the VNC Tower mission. Frank discovered the existence of a radio transmitter which the military shut down years earlier. According to the Council of Mankind sessions, the power and the transmitter have been shut off so survivors wouldn't find out the extent of the outbreak prior to the Black Monday bombings. Frank wants to activate this transmitter and use it to broadcast warnings and messages to the survivors in the city to ensure better chances of survival. The only problem? It's on top of the looming 110 meter tall VNC tower in the central loop, the tallest building in the city. No one had ever attempted to climb up the tower due to the simple fact that it's a volatile nest. It's swarming with infected. Frank calls all the night runners and they embark upon their mission but Frank's team gets absolutely decimated. There were far more volatiles in there than they anticipated. They fail in their mission and the transmitter remains dormant. As you heard from his tapes, Anton started to get more reckless after taking inhibitors. At some point, Anton got irrational and argued with Killian inside a dark zone, drawing a viral which attacked him. As a result, Frank put Anton on notice. Clearly, Frank knows the cost of what they do as night runners and doesn't want anyone jeopardizing that. It seems that Anton, who was supposed to be on leave, made his way out to the VNC tower in secret, but he got trapped inside a room with a volatile roaming outside. What's funny is that we never hear Anton die on tape. We don't know if he got out of the tower or not. It could be setting up for a story DLC, but who knows, it's just a theory. Anyway, I'm getting off track. When talking to Aiden, Frank seems to keep mentioning one night runner in particular, Ravik. Are you alive, man? Huh? Ravik? I told you to fucking leave me alone. From Frank's tapes, we hear that the night before the VNC tower mission, Hakon got in Frank's face and told him it was a suicide mission. Killian thought so too, and as a result, both Hakon and Killian failed to show up. Take a listen to what Frank had to say about it. All I needed was the VNC tower. Thought we could hack it. Everyone will win. They're all dead. Give me some bullshit about the plan being suicidal. The night before the mission, he got in my face. With everyone watching. Oh yeah, I told him to fuck off. <laughs> but didn't think he'd actually bail. We'd had arguments before. But he was a no-show. Even turned Killian against me. Maybe he thought I'd cancel the mission. Well, I didn't. And inside were a fuckload more volatiles than our intel led us to believe. Everything I'd fought for. The night runners bringing hope to people, uniting the factions. <sighs> All lost. It seems that Ravik was also convinced by Hakon, but then Frank mentions on his third tape that Ravik showed up anyway and got killed. But the real past is Ravik. I was pissed when he took Hakon's side. But then the bastard showed up anyway. <laughs> Stupid kid. With most of his night runners gone, Frank disbands the night runners and everyone goes their separate ways. Killian settles in Old Villador, as does Hakon. 
Frank is haunted by the deaths of his night runners and spirals into a deep depression and turns to drink as a way to cope. The night runners then become almost like a myth, an organization where just as many people believe they existed as people who don't. Fast forward a bit and you know the story. Aidan Coldwell arrives and providing you side with Frank and give the transmitter to him instead of Jack Matt gives the foundation for the Night Runners to return once again. And again, providing you save Luan and the city, she becomes the leader of the Night Runners as Frank, well, you know, he's busy with his new radio station now. But this is also potentially short lived when you consider that one of the endings shows Luan leaving the city with Aiden and they walk off into the Outlands together. So with that ending, it's possible that either Hakon or Killian would become leader of the Night Runners, but again, that's just a theory. Either way, I hope this short video did a bit to explain the Night Runners, how they came to be, and how it all went wrong, as well as their resurrection. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe if you aren't already. But for now, take care, and I will see you in the next one.